So on that page, page 14, example number two, you have a matrix like this. 1, 6, 4, 2, 4, negative 1, negative 1, 2, 5. Uh, we have to see if the matrix has the inverse. The way they ask the question already sort of hinting that probably the matrix doesn't have the inverse. Uh, so, uh, well, but I still will do the full approach here, just without a, this extra guessing. So, like before, all we have to do, we have to build this big, uh, big uh, extended augmented matrix where the left-hand side is the content of your A matrix and the right-hand side is the appropriate sized identity matrix. Here it is. First row from your A matrix, and the, that's the first row of the identity. Second row of your A matrix, 2, 4, negative 1. And the second row of your identity. And the last row of this matrix. And the last row of the identity. Uh, I will take this to the row echelon form, this, this, can be this big matrix. It's a lot to copy. You don't have to do that. I'm sure the solution helper, which is on Moodle, has the details of that of that conversion. Conversion of this matrix to the row echelon form. You can check the solution helper. Do you know what I'm talking about? Good. It's just all for your benefit, you see? Uh, you don't, it's, it's a lot to copy. It's, it's, it's a tedious sort of thing which we don't have to do, in fact. So, but here on this slide, I have all of the details. So I have all of the details. So at the first stage, the solution helper or this piece of the software suggested be doing this sort of manipulation. So we banish these two elements by doing these elementary row operations. The result of that is here. That's the result of that. You see, we have two extra zeros now. Now, the software or the solution helper will suggest to do something like this because by adding the row three and the row two, it will vanish this. And by an accident, it will vanish this nine two. So the result of this sec a third uh, row reduction will you will have something like this. And at this stage, the conclusion is clear, isn't it? The conclusion is the matrix. No, 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 not no solutions because that's the the context right now is the inverse of a matrix. So in the current context, the conclusion is we don't have the inverse. If you, of course, if you have already like a uh, suspicion that you won't have the inverse, you don't have to do the operations on the left hand side. All you have to do, you have to take this smaller matrix and do your row operations on, on this smaller matrix alone, right? Because to, to see the conclusion that the matrix doesn't have the inverse, you don't need the right hand side. You only need your right hand side when you truly need the inverse itself, the content of that inverse. If you're suspecting the inverse doesn't exist, like in this question, the way they ask the question, probably already hinting there won't be any inverse. You don't have to do the left hand side. But that's of course it's your own risk. If you do only the left hand side and you hit all three leading columns, you have to redo the whole thing because now you will need the right hand side. So it's it's your choice every time you do it. You might take this shortcut without the right hand side, keeping the fingers crossed and hoping it won't be the any inverse. And if if it if if the, if the not every column will be the leading one, you you just you hit the jackpot. Yeah, you just you, you save, you save some, some time. If not, then you have to redo it. So it's it's, it's, it's every time it's a choice of it's your choice, of course. So in this case, we don't have any inverse. Mm, I have one question. Another question in relation to the inverse. That's the one on the page 15. Uh, it's the connection between the inverse matrices and uh, and system of linear equations. 